So we've developed a variety of equations that relate the input mean function to the output mean function and the input autocorrelation function to the output autocorrelation function for continuous time systems. And those equations are for different combinations of assumptions regarding whether the system is just a linear system or a linear and time invariant system and regarding whether the input process is kind of a general process or a wide sense stationary random process. We could redo everything for discrete time systems, kind of redevelop all those different equations and cases, but instead of going through all that in detail, I'm just going to summarize these things here for discrete time systems for completeness, but we're not going to go through all of the mathematical details. All the equations look very similar to the continuous time case, with the most part just integrals switched to sums and things like that. So these look like very reasonable results, but we're not going to prove them. You can follow almost the exact same steps we followed before to get to them if you'd like. So first let's talk about the mean function. So in general, the output mean function of a discrete time system we call mu sub y of k. So the notation here, we still use parentheses, but we use k to indicate this is a discrete time process, also sometimes called a uh, random sequence or discrete time sequence. And in general, it is equal to an infinite sum h k comma i times the input mean function. So this is general because we're assuming that we have a linear system, but it's not necessarily time invariant. So this is kind of the general equation. If you have a time invariant system, we know what happens. This two-dimensional time function turns into h of k minus i because we're now time invariant. So this equation right here is an equation that relates the input mean function to the output mean function via the impulse response of the system if it's a linear time invariant system. We can also talk about the special case where the input random process has a constant mean. In that case, mu x of i is just a number, we'll call it mu x, and this could be brought outside of the summation. So if we do that here on the bottom, we can bring mu x of i outside the summation. And then what we're doing is we're actually summing from minus infinity to infinity h of k minus i. Well, that's summing up every value, so I can rewrite that sum like this. It's just the sum of every single value of the impulse response. So in this case we get a mean function that is in fact a constant itself at the output. So instead of calling it mu sub y of k, we call it mu sub y because it is a number. On this side of the equation we have a number times the sum, and this sum itself is just a number. It's a summation of all the values of the discrete time impulse response of the system. Turning our attention now to the cross-correlation function. Remember we developed equations for the cross-correlation function for continuous time systems as we built up towards deriving the autocorrelation function expression. In general, the cross-correlation between the input and the output is given by this summation right here. For the special case of a time invariant system and a wide sense stationary input, this simplifies quite a bit. Both of these two-dimensional time functions turn into one-dimensional time functions. So this turns into a single time dimensional function, and this turns into just this difference of time. So we can write it like this. So I switched variables here, dummy variable n versus dummy variable m, but that's really irrelevant. It's just a counter variable. So for the time invariant system with wide sense stationary input case, this is an expression for our cross correlation, and this is essentially a convolution summation. Let's go ahead and use that now here in just a minute as we develop an equation for the correlation function or the autocorrelation function. In general, the output autocorrelation function is given by this equation. It's a sum of the possibly time varying impulse response with the cross correlation function. On the previous page, we had an expression in general for the cross correlation function. So if we replace that here, we get this large double summation. So in general, this is what needs to be computed to compute the output autocorrelation function of a discrete time system given the possibly time varying impulse response and the possibly non wide sense stationary input process. If we have a time invariant system and wide sense stationary inputs, all of this simplifies quite a bit again. The impulse response turns into a single one-dimensional function because its impulse response is the same no matter what time. And similarly, the cross-correlation function is now a one-dimensional time function. So if I do some mathematics and do some replacements here, I can replace my autocorrelation function with the 
version of the autocorrelation function specific to having a wide sense stationary input and a time invariant system. That replaces this with another summation. So now we have a double summation here. And then if we look at this and do a little arranging and we define a time reversed version of the impulse response, we can write this as h tilde a convolved with h convolved with rx. So h tilde here is just the time reversed version of h. So this equation here looks exactly like the equation we had for the continuous time case. In the continuous time case, we also had this exact equation. And then what we did is we defined h tilde convolved with h as f. Some books define that as g. But this is just some function. You can convolve these two together and lump it together like this. And then you can have a nice compact expression for the output autocorrelation function. It's given just by the convolution of this f function with the input autocorrelation function. This is always an even function. R sub x is always a one-dimensional time function since we're talking about the special case of wide sense stationary inputs. And if you want to expand it, not use the star operator, if you actually want to write out the convolution sum, this bottom equation is that expression. So we've seen very similar equations for discrete time systems, not surprisingly, very similar to the ones that we saw for the continuous time case. And all the trends are exactly the same. If I want to compute the output autocorrelation function, the only thing I need to know is the input autocorrelation function and my system impulse response. If I want to know the cross-correlation function between the input and output, all I need to know is the input autocorrelation function and my system impulse response. If I have an input that is wide sense stationary, the output will be wide sense stationary, and the input and output are going to be jointly wide sense stationary. That means their cross-correlation function only depends on the time difference. It's not a two-dimensional time function. And finally, if the input is covariant stationary, the output is covariant stationary. So we, we, could have, we made all these observations for the continuous time case. They all hold again for the discrete time case as well. So we went through this much more quickly than we did for the continuous time case. But again, all the steps are so similar, I didn't think it was worth the time to go through the nitty-gritty details. We just kind of jumped to the punchline and summarized the equations. So we now have those equations available if we need to use them for whatever a case we might be working in, whether it's a general system, whether it's a time invariant system, whether it's a wide sense stationary input, whether it's both of those things. We now have all these equations written out and summarized.